The Fantasy Edge with Richard Seville and Dennis Sosick. Oh, uh, and welcome to the Fantasy Edge. I am Richard Seville of Fantasy Six Pack. And joining me shortly will be also from FantasySixPack.net, Dennis Sosik, uh, to give you the waivers and the latest news. And there is a lot of news that uh, some people probably don't really want to hear about. I mean, I certainly didn't want to hear about it. I mean, it's been, I don't know, no good news. I mean, I guess we're going to get some people back um, soon, I hope. But uh, but we're losing some great fantasy stars. And it's not just losing the fantasy stars. Uh, we're losing people who uh, are actually fun to watch in real football terms and that we kind of enjoy because we enjoy fo- I mean, we wouldn't be playing fantasy football if we didn't enjoy the game, period. And losing people like, well... Derek Henry, Dennis, it's 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 got to be it. It really is a gut punch that one. Yeah, hello, Richard. Yeah, it's uh, that one hurts. I mean, he's such a phenomenal football player and obviously a great fantasy player. That losing him, um, that offense raised the bell cow and does everything for that offense is a big gut punch. It is, and uh, yeah, it's his foot surgery is expected to miss six to ten weeks, and we always we always know that. Well. Ten weeks is the season, really. I mean, fantasy-wise. I mean, yeah, okay, you can be back for the playoffs. What good is that? I mean, there are fantasy games that we play, like you know, playoffs. But you know, but this is the I main for the real thing. For people who own Derrick Henry, uh, yeah, we're losing some. We're losing some people. And um, I have, uh, I mean, the top of the fantasy pros ranks has Adrian Peterson, as they have uh, signed him, and they will probably activate him. Um, Dennis, do you? I think uh, they're not going to just run Adrian Peterson. He's too old to, to run this. I think there's something else going. Uh, they're going to have something else going. And I mean, besides Jeremy McNichol as well. Yeah, I would think so. You know, with the trade deadline at Tuesday at 4 o'clock, I think they're going to make some. I think they're going to go for a trade. I mean, Adrian Peterson's, uh, I mean, he's obviously older. He's sitting on the street for a reason. I'm not sure how much he has left. So, I mean, who do they go get? You know, they get uh, Melvin Gordon. Ronald Jones. I mean, there's some opportunities out there. I'd be interested to see what they do. A lot of people say Marlon Mack, but he plays on a rival team. Yeah, I don't see that happening. I don't see the Colts trading with their, their own division. That doesn't make sense for the Colts. Well, it's not only that. They just dropped Jordan Wilkins. Yeah, true. They need that depth, too. I don't yeah. see that happening. But I could see maybe a Melvin Gordon let Javante Williams uh, run free. Especially since he's doing, I don't have a roster in many of these that would help me. Uh, and uh, Ronald Jones, I mean, who knows if he's actually available or not, but you know, Tyson Williams, maybe of the Ravens, he seems like he's in their doghouse. Maybe it's you know he's shown flashes. Maybe he could shine with the uh, with the opportunity there. Yeah, there's lots of guys to go out and grab. I mean, can you, uh, think of how huge that Mark Ingram trade is now. Right. Yeah, you're right. I see you mentioned a couple of times on our Slack channel. I mean, that's a good point. That he'd be a person that they go after immediately. He's a similar kind of player, but not to that level, of course, but uh, type of player he is, you know. So, I mean, that would be something that would fit right in that offense pretty well. The only problem with him is that he's the uh, uh, same division as well. So Yeah, true. But, but yeah, they might do that. But I think Texans are in a little bit of different uh, spot than the Colts. The Colts are actually competitive. <laughs> right. <laughs> so... Yeah, they- the Texans are definitely not. Yeah, they're just selling off. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised even David Johnson is someone they, they look at as well. And Philip Lindsay even. I mean, they may get traded as well. I mean, they're just selling off everybody on the team. Yeah. There's no point in keeping them. And the, uh, the, the Eagles just, just got Jordan Howard. At- it, it just seems all these peop- all these players that they could use are disappearing. Um, I, don't, I don't know who else. I don't know who else that there is. That, that, that there, there probably is some guys that that we're not thinking about. But you went through every to probably. Right, the a thing is, I was thinking of hmm? that might might be an opportunity. Is that Jamal Williams of the Lions? I mean, DeAndre yeah? Swift there. Swift is he's explosive. I mean, the Williams is just, you know he's losing more touches. Weekly, so mm. uh, he's a veteran guy who can block, so he won't be a bad selection. Of, uh, it's an option. Um, right. the yeah, they can't go to the Bears. I mean, if they that would be that would be blockbuster if David Montgomery if they kept uh, Khalil Herbert and then just and gave them uh, David Montgomery off the IR. That'd be something. I don't think that'll <laughs> yeah. happen because right now, right now, holding on to backup running backs is uh, 
kind of important. I mean, we kind of saw that with Eckler. I mean, Eckler uh, might have been out. Can you imagine what, what kind of a situation that would have been if Eckler had been out? Like, cause there was talk that he might not have played this week. So everybody's looking, like, everybody's, like, looking at Just Jackson and Josh Kelly. Right. So, I mean, yeah, you just see... that predicament, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was scary. I'm like, please play, please play. I didn't want those revolving running backs. Those are always uh, not fun to uh, guess which one's going to be the one this week. Yeah, the thing is, too, that, that even if they do play after talk like that, you kind of wonder, mm-hmm, which are they going to use them? Are they going to be, are they going to, are we going to get Eckler light to this week or are going to sort of light, yeah. light, light duties Eckler? <laughs> right. Yeah, you never know. If he reaggravates the injury, then what? Then you started him and he plays the first drive or something. I'll see him the rest of the game. Well, I still still yeah, think that's, that's something. Only. I still think it's something we've got to watch is that the Eckler situation. So if you're yeah. if you're if you don't get in on 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 the waiver rush uh, because there are other other issues going on in in the waivers, but uh, Derek Henry definitely uh, um, calls out the the Adrian Peterson. I think you pick up Peterson. I mean, because he's the first up and, uh, already in our F six P league. Somebody dropped a giant so that they could get Peter. Ah, <laughs> uh, what happened there? Yeah, yeah, lost somebody, you. Is that somebody dro- joined us, or or did you lose? Oh, no, I just sit right here. It is a no, I, I, air, no, so. I heard a, I heard a ding. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't me. Mm. Anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, anyways, uh, moving right along. Um, Jameis Winston. Winston suffered torn ACL week eight. We saw Trevor Simeon come in and beat Tom Brady. You should have seen, I don't know if you saw it, but Drew Brees was just beaming on Sunday Night Football over it. <laughs> <laughs> just, he was so excited for He him. was just yeah. delighted. He, I don't, I don't, I don't think he and Tom Brady get on very well. Yeah, I don't think so either. He was out probably well late by other players, but, but uh, I like Drew Brees. He's he's not pretentious. He's kind of like no. I was talking about Brady, not Brees, but <laughs> oh, oh, you were talking about yeah. <laughs> <laughs> talking about Brady. Yeah, yeah. No, Brees, uh, yeah, I never heard that many bad things about Brees. Brees seems like a good guy. So, but yeah, he's yeah he's and then you know how they first thing they do is ask me, hey, you want to come back? You gonna come back and play? Is it uh, I'm done. I'm good. Yeah, he won't come back. Nah, he's nah, he's, 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 he's too good to come back. You got he's a where? cushy job, you know, as an analyst. Now, why would he do that? Oh, exactly. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna put yourself out there, and like in the uh, after your contract, and then you're gonna get. Yeah, he, he's he's kind of got. He's living the good life now, which he should. Right. I mean, he's he's a Hall of Famer himself. He's going Absolutely. in the Hall of Fame. I mean, he's his career. Brees, it's it's always kind of been in the shadow of Brady because they're they're in the same era. And I guess you could kind of call. I guess you kind of say that of Rogers and well, even Peyton Manning, really. Uh, yeah, sure. So, uh, but anyways, the current situation as it is, the real situation is um, Taysom Hill or Trevor Simeon who takes over. Or is this going to be like a? Is this going to be like a, a quarterback by committee? What's it? What's it going to happen there? Do you think? Yeah, I, I don't even know if Trevor Simeon is still in the league. To be honest with you, when he came out there, I was like, "Wow, holy cow, he's still in the league." That's yeah. kind of crazy, but. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's he's just uh, he's not a game changer. He's, he's more of a you know uh, um, you know manages the team, but he's not uh, anything that stands out. But Taysom Hill, it's kind of like a cheat code out there. And I would check if he's available in your league. So I think he'll, I think they'll give him the chance to start. Hopefully, he's healthy enough to. I mean, you know, that concussion he's coming back from. We'll see if he's healthy enough to to play. But I, I think it'll be. I think they're gonna give Taysom Hill the first opportunity. I just don't think he's an NFL level quarterback. I mean, he's good at he's good in the role that he does as as for the quarterbacking that he does in the role that he plays on the Saints. He's excellent. I mean, he's. He's obviously an anti fantasy player and we, we often gripe about that because he scores a lot of touchdowns and right. <laughs> he does a lot of stuff and we, we he's he's the perfect anti fantasy player, Taysom Hill. And if he becomes a quarterback, well, you know, I think that and I I don't know, it's it's kind of a wait and see. But I don't know. I'm not. I, eh, I don't know. I've seen him seen him out there for for a bit in spark in fits and starts, you know. But right. uh, but really, I'm not. A, I'm not a big Taysom. I am a Taysom Hill fan, but not as a not a fan of him at behind center as a regular starter. I like Taysom Hill as a player, but yeah, follow. <laughs> no, I follow you. absolutely. Yeah, I mean, he's. I mean, if you're in a two quarterback league, hopefully you have opportunity to grab him. That's like the perfect number two quarterback to have. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I mean, he's not going to be your number one, of course, but hopefully you don't have to go that far. Um, you know, I wouldn't even touch Trevor Simeon in that league, but Tyson Hill, I mean, he's, he can have those, you know, blow up games that'll win you some weeks, but 
they also give you those quick saves like why did I start them? You know. But mm. Have we got it? A, it does uh, Michael Thomas get a downgrade on his return, which is coming soon? Yeah, but I think he'll he'll like Thomas. I mean, he was going the ball. He was targeting them all the time. I think who takes the biggest hit is Kamara. He's the oh. one that's going to be the one that's going to uh, see a downgrade in, in action and touches when Hill's there. Hill loves running the ball, mm-hmm. and you don't want to take the ball out of Kamara's hands, which is kind of stupid. But I think that's who's going to who's going to take the downgrade is Kamara. Yeah, and especially with uh, we, we mentioned uh, Mark Ingram as well. So, but I think Mark Ingram is just he's there so that what happens to Kamara, you know, isn't like Mark Ingram's there so that uh, Kamara doesn't become a Derrick Henry case. Yeah. I get it's tired out and before it make it an injury or something, oh, keep them fresh as possible. Fatigue injuries happen all the time, and uh, oh, yeah, so that's they're, they're kind of. I think the the Saints could see that coming. They, they, they got in just under the wire. Quite a quite yeah, a. They were smart. Team. Yep, very smart move. Uh more injury news. James Robinson. Um, Adam Schefter reports James Robinson uh, avoided a serious injury. Divine Zigbo added to the Jaguars roster. Carlos Hyde is the next man up. Now we don't know the extent of the injuries. We don't know whether James Robinson is day to day, week to week. Either way, I think uh, on the fantasy wire you got to pick up Carlos Hyde, and maybe uh, people in deeper leagues might might want to consider Divine Zigbo. Uh, what's your thoughts on this injury? This particular injury and have you got any have you heard anything new on this? Uh, nothing new i mean i i've been a fan of robinson he won me a couple of weeks last year after picking him up in mid-season so uh, i've been i got him again this year and uh yeah I, i'm not a big fan of carlos hyde he leaves a house state guy he's he's just a plotter he's nothing special um you know you know he only gets the yards that are available to him he doesn't make you know, get the extra yard so i think you know especially in that offense i don't, I don't see nothing special coming out of carlos hyde but I hope Robinson is okay. I hope we see him again quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, Calvin Ridley announces he's going to step away from football at this time to focus on his mental health. Kyle Pitts also said this week that his week eight role against uh, Carolina didn't change, but he saw more people over the top of him Sunday, and this is going to be a problem when you don't have Calvin Ridley in there, right? Right, yeah. And I hope you know, Calvin Ridley finds his way and gets his mind like, you know, healthy first and foremost, but we're going to hope we can see him on the back on the field soon. He's telling a wide out because we missed in that offense and in our little fake football world here. That good luck to Ridley and, you know, the offense now is going to revolve around Pitts and, you know, Patterson now, which is going to boost their value, but Pitts was getting double and double teamed all game. And we only had, uh, you know, two catches on six targets for 13 yards after exploding the first, the two previous games. So. Um, and people are just going to take Pitts out of the game every game. And hopefully they can stop Patterson, you know, in his, uh, running and receiving. I haven't taken a close look at their depth chart lately. I'm just going to open up their depth chart here and take a look at, uh, see what's going on with the, uh, with their depth charts. I know there's, they only got guys like Zacchaeus out there. And, uh, so it's, but Kyle Pitts, he's the guy right now. I mean, unfortunately he needs, he really needs. I mean, if guys are, are, are blanketing him and he's talking about it, there's obviously something going, oh yeah, Russell Gage. Obviously he's the guy to own, right? And Todd yeah. Shar. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, I, I, I'm kind of spoiling the Thunder a little bit, but I won't do that. But we're, uh... <laughs> right. Well, the sad thing is I picked up Russell Gage when I heard the news, figuring that he would you know, do something offense, and he got zeros, absolute zeros across the board. I don't know what happened. No, but he got nothing for me that, that kind of pissed me off. I was hoping, you know, sneak one in there and get a, a sneaky uh, points, but he didn't do anything for me. Mm. Something to monitor and also keep your eye on those Falcons. Um, we're, uh, we're monitoring everything here. So, um, after this um, big weekend, <laughs> this crazy weekend for backups, uh, all four of them did great. Uh, you know, you had Mike White there, Trevor Simeon, and then you had Cooper Rush there, and, and even Geno Smith found a way to have a good game. <laughs> what a crazy week! Wow, this is crazy. I know. Said they, each one of them was phenomenal in their in their wins. I mean, it's sort of Simeon we talked about. Mike White was you know four hundred plus yards passing. Cooper Rush the last second, you know, going off uh, Prescott was going to play, and then Rush comes out there. Rush comes out there and just does. He was, I mean, he led those, that offense like crazy, was pushing the ball downfield, which I think they're do. I think we just saw Elliott all week, all game, but he was pushing Cooper and Lamb over 100 yards in the night, each of them, 21 targets between them. It's crazy, but 
That's great for them. I mean, that was supposed to see his family there. That was good to see Rush and basically see it in front of his family. Yeah, was, uh, uh, quite, quite a yeah. touching moment. I remember, you kind of remember moments like that. Like, I remember, like, Colt McCoy coming out there, you know, and his family's out there looking. Right, it's good stuff. So, uh, yeah, you like seeing that. Um, but anyway, Zach Wilson of the Jets will practice before the team's Week 10 game against the Bills. Uh, the Jets haven't decided whether Flacco will be active or not on Thursday. Day. This obviously means that they're they're quite happy with Mike what 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 Mike White did against the Bengals <laughs> yeah, upset of the be. year. Uh, um, Dennis, if if uh, if White Mike White does it again, um, is there a quarterback controversy? Yeah, I don't. I mean, it's I don't think the Jets would would want to sit uh, Wilson after making the second overall pick. You know that kind of money. Yeah, I, I doubt they would want to sit him. But Mike White was impressive. I mean, it's one game, um, but. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I wouldn't even worry about Flacco. I mean, when you see Flacco, this, the worst thing, you know, happens and both those guys get hurt. But, um, I, I think we see White maybe, uh, this Thursday and then we see Wilson back after that. But, uh, I, w- I would say they're going to start with Wilson once he's healthy. What do you think? Well, I saw Mike White in a, in a, in a brief interview before, uh, the weekend, like it was during the week and he's talking about the game and he actually seems like a, um, a studious type of quarterback. Like he, uh, uh he so- sounds like he's a guy that, I mean, obviously if you're on the bench, the only thing you can do is study, but he seems like a very studious fellow and, uh, uh it's interesting hearing him, hearing his attitude to starting, um, this Sunday when, before the game. Well, they'll, they'll get me ready. They'll, they'll help me. They'll, and all I've got to do is just do do. Basically, he's just saying I've just got to do what I've t- what I'm told, and everything will be good. And it was. And uh, yeah. so uh, he was. He didn't try to. He didn't try to uh, do too much. And threw a couple of interceptions. Granted, the interceptions were kind of you know they're. I, w- I would say they weren't on the. They weren't all his fault. Maybe they were bad decisions. I mean, always an interception is a bad decision, but. <laughs> I don't know. It, right. I mean, it all comes out in the wash. And if, uh, I mean, they're on the road to the Colts on Thursday. So we'll, we'll see how, how he does. I'm, I, I'm kind of pulling for him because, uh, I will say that he he didn't he didn't strike me as a really impressive flamboyant fellow when I when I saw them in that little brief interview on YouTube. But it, he, he it, it did kind of did kind of interest me about how he, how it all came out. But the fans were all chanting his name as he's going off the field, and it's just <laughs> it's, you know how fans are they just they just they just cling on if something when miracles happen. So you just right. go like that. Yeah, it's good to see. Um, last thing in the news is Chris Boswell. Uh, the Steelers don't have a kicker. <laughs> I thought it was quite <laughs> funny. <laughs> Chris Boswell, uh, what they do, they got him to do, uh, like a fake and uh, right. he ended up getting hurt out of it. It was not a good, it turned out to be not such a great idea. You don't expect the, the uh, kicker to get hurt, but he did. <laughs> and now they gotta get, now they gotta get a new kicker. They'll get a new kicker, folks. And, uh, people, people who are in kicker fantasy leagues, which, uh, Dennis, I'm actually surprised there are still all lot of people who have kickers in their fantasy league nothing wrong with that but saying i guess that yeah i'm a big proponent of taking kickers out of fantasy it's another subject for another day but yeah i mean that's and i was wanting to get away from that and when when i see leagues we're like yeah we're gonna start a kicker i'm like oh man we're killing i gotta look at kickers too i mean i don't want to do that yeah it becomes Um, a bit much when you start well actually kickers you just you kind of stick with one one season all season and you just they're really a good luck charm for your fantasy team. <laughs> <laughs> you hope so, right? Yeah. Unless you had Chris Boswell, then, you know, maybe not. Well, he's one of the better yeah, ones. I mean, yeah, right. Well, I was watching the game. I have, you know, I'm a huge Boswell fan. My family is a bunch of Steelers fans who so were watching the game. And I saw what they were trying to do, and I see the hit. That was shot. They didn't call a penalty on that play. It should have been It should have been a 15-yard penalty. But, uh, I mean, he got up, and you could tell he was on him. No clue what his name was or where he was at. So, yeah, that's right. So, the game, you know. I mean, it changed the strategy for the Steelers the rest of the game. I was going to keep field goals. They had to go for two. They had to go for four pounds. So it changed the game. I mean, luckily, the Browns keep shooting themselves in the foot with drops and fumbles that, you know, if they were able to succeed, they would probably haunted the Steelers with the, with the issue. I should say that they lost their kicker, but I'm not sure why they tried that down. But, you know, they tried to surprise them, but it didn't work. <laughs> they got this roly-poly guy called Presley Harvin, who's the- <laughs> 
who's the punter to do the? Uh, I saw the. Yeah, <laughs> what, who's this guy? Yeah. <laughs> Presley Harvey. Yeah, he's a big. He's a big fella. Like, uh, like he's uh, six foot two hundred and fifty five. Like he's like a. <laughs> it's like a lineman. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah like, what is he gonna do? <laughs> I don't know, but he's out there punting. <laughs> Punting the football, so he's, uh, yeah, good, uh, so Presley Harvin, yeah, <laughs> I don't think, well, he, they, they put him in there, he's not, he's, he's not a police kicker by, by, uh, uh, by, by training, he's, he's just, he's just pure punter. I think he probably played the line for, but they find, oh, this guy can, <laughs> this guy can punt. Well, that's all right. You can use him. So anyways, Presley Harvin, uh, didn't, <laughs> I thought they didn't, they didn't trust him enough to do any kicks. So. Right. I saw that. Yeah. They, they had no chances with that. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're moving on now. We're moving on to the side. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that. That little jingle means that it's time for us to take a look at the who's moving on up this week. And moving on up for me is uh, owing to obviously to the news of of what we just talked about um, with Calvin Ridley, uh, Cordero Patterson. But he's been kind of moving up anyway. Uh, he's got to be the biggest surprise this season, Dennis. Uh, found found life in fantasy. Like he was, <laughs> he was never. Uh, I never thought he'd ever come into the fantasy realm but here he is and he, and he's doing good he's he's uh, he's right up there near the top 10 every week and for for uh, rankings and uh, and he's in every week start and if you've got him in your flag he's just a, you just flex him every week that that the Atlanta Falcons are playing and they're passer by so you just play in Cordell Patterson every week what what a player what a player and he's and he's kind of electrifying <laughs> right yeah I mean, he's always been uh you know, lead kick or punt returner, but now he's, you know, became a force on, you know, in the backfield. I mean, this is a good way to talk about Patterson each week. We'd I mean, start off as saying, well, he's, it's just a fluke. He's not going to happen, but he's, he's been a force. I mean, he finished as that running back 13 this past week and now he's currently run, run, running back nine on the year. So, uh, he's someone that, you know, especially now with really not, you know, away for a while. Uh, he's going to be the focal point of the offense. And if he's uh, somebody you can get in your league in a trade or something, I'd try to grab him. Yeah, I would too. Uh, yeah, even trading um, for him, he could, I don't know who you could trade for him. He's pretty kind of valuable for, for you know, he's a, he's the most valuable flex. Well, and even, I would even argue RB2 can be an RB2 as well. He's that yeah. good. Yeah, PPR leagues, I can see that. Yeah, makes sense. So, yeah, and you get the, and you can, the other thing too is, is that you're not restricted in a lot of leagues. You're not restricted to keeping him in an RB slot. You can put him as your WR3. And so you've got, he's, so in that sense, he's, he's also fantasy valuable for his, you know, changeability. You can, you can start him as a in in a WR slot. Right, yeah, it's nice to have that flexibility, especially uh, if you have a stud, two stud running backs, and put them in wide out and flex. It's very important to have uh, yep. the flexibility. Yeah, I got, I got, I got, I got muddled there, but that's right. Uh, who's moving up? Oh, I'm a uh, I'm a huge fan of this guy, Michael Carter uh, mm-hmm. for the Jets. I mean, yeah, I liked him when he was coming out of North Carolina when he stood out. And broke uh, Tar Heel records, even is in a timeshare with Javante Williams. Uh, he led the team in rushing and receiving in the just shocking win over the Bengals on Sunday. 77 yards rushing, nine passes on a whopping 14 targets for 95 yards. And he's put on 72% of snaps now, and he's RB1 in the Jets' backfield. Uh, I think he's, you know, his, his, his uh, value continues to rise. There's somewhere down one trying to get, and I've got him in many of these, and I'm, I'm thank God he's on my team. I think you mentioned him before. Yes, he uh, came out as the RB1 this week, uh, the RB finish. He was the number one RB finisher, finisher this week uh, in fantasy, in half PPR, and I think even in standard PPR. Yeah, in all three formats, yeah, he's number one. So, yeah, uh, um, yeah, I, I think you mentioned him before. He was a guy to get, and... Uh, but uh, yeah, this is his first number one finish. Twenty-eight fantasy points in, in half PR. Uh, Ninety, like you say, ninety-five receiving yards and a touchdown. You can't, you can't argue that. I mean, but that was, and and that's basically where the bulk of Mike White is going to. He's going to his, you know, he was going for the easy receptions. But I mean, when you when you get it in, when you get the ball into people's hands that can move it, like guy, like like Michael Carter, that's that's going to help a guy like Mike White. Right. Let's open the ball off. Even Ty Johnson, that offense was getting, I mean, he got like six catches for like 70 plus yards. So he's doing his dumping the ball, let those guys make plays. Smart quarterback, like you said. <laughs> yes. Danger, yeah. danger. Oh, panic time. 
Dennis, you got to give me a panic. Who are we panicking on? Oh, Alan Robinson. Again? Yeah, what is- <laughs> <laughs> he's he's on yeah, this he, list he, every week. <laughs> it seems like, it, yeah, it, it's a huge disappointment. I, you know, I thought he would be a good fit with Fields there, but he's uh, – He's not going. He's been a huge failure. He finished, you know, last uh, this past Sunday with three catches for 21 yards on four targets. And after averaging 100 catches last couple of seasons, he's you know, he's only has 26 catches on 271 yards through eight games. And the only saving grace for him is if he gets traded. Right now, he's doing nothing in Chicago. Yeah, M- Mooney seems to be the preferred option, as you say. Uh, three receptions, 21 yards. <laughs> Previous week, 16 yards. <laughs> yeah, it's Previous pathetic. week to that, oh, you got 53 in week six against the Packers. But, uh, you know, yeah, you're right. Uh, it's no wonder that we're we're talking him down every single week. Um, it, it, he's definitely fancy hard work. Oh, I, well, I don't know. There's there's quite a few of them we can talk about, OBJ and uh, right. Brandon I. Yeah, well. So if you had him on your team, would you drop him this week if you had someone that would go after <sighs> Uh, yeah, I would. I don't think. I, I mean, you got to kind of think like we're halfway through the season now. I think it's a long enough. I think you keep. I think Mooney's a hold. Yeah, I think so too. Because uh, yeah, I mean, he gets feels out there. But the only thing I worry about Robinson now is if he gets traded to you know after Tuesday. I mean, we'll know by by the time you put your waiver wire because the deadline's at four o'clock. But if he gets traded somewhere, then he could shine. I mean, who knows where he's going to go? He can go anywhere. But. Uh, I maybe hold him to find out where he goes, and then if he's in Chicago after the trade deadline, I'm I'm letting him go, getting rid of him. Yep, uh, you got to. Uh, yeah, he's. Yeah, I may. Yeah, you may be right. Yeah, wait until after the trade deadline for right. do anything. That's a good. Advice. Wait, who do you have? Who are you panicking about? Uh Julio, actually. Um, Julio Jones, uh, I am a little bit kind of concerned about kind of in this injury phase. We're halfway through the season, and um, he hasn't had a 100-yard game since week two against Seattle. Um, he had... Uh, he had just four targets against. Now, granted, he was he was a bit hurt and continues to be hurt. He's he's in this hurt mode at the moment, and uh, I'm kind of a little kind of worried about him. I mean, you don't drop him, but uh, starting to panic about Julio Jones. It's a bit of a concern. Um, last two weeks, of, like hey, okay, there's two tough match. Well, I don't consider Kansas City a tough matchup. But he only got yeah, 38 yards, and but the previous week he got 40, he got 59 yards against the Bills, and then of course you know those two weeks he was out against the Jets and Jacksonville, but before that, but he's hurt again. So I, I I'm kind of a little bit with Julio Jones. I'm a little bit kind of concerned that uh, we're kind of looking at a little bit more of the same happening with him that we've kind of seen in years when he's been not 100, percent you know. Right. Yeah. I mean, he's. He's always been one of my favorite players, and I was curious to see what he was going to do with the move to the Titans. And, you know, it seems like he's more on the sidelines than on the field. And I think the wear and tear has got to him. And, and as you mentioned, he only had that one game over 100 yards receiving. is not done much beyond that. And they're going to need him now with Henry gone. Um, they're going to hope him. Adrian Brown's, you know, he's, he's stood up and he's been producing the last couple of weeks. And now we need Julio to get healthy, um, uh, in their offense. I mean, but I don't have much faith in him being healthy and productive now. No. Uh, moving on to, uh, our, the, our waiver wire, uh, critiques. Uh, this is the fantasy pros, the early waiver wire rankings of fantasy pros of what uh, the experts think we should be picking up on Wednesday. And so Dennis and I look at it and uh, scrutinize. And I, I, you know, I'm seeing a lot of names up here. Now, we, we already talked about Adrian Peterson, so I'm going to move on from that. I kind of have a, I'll give myself a, um, I'll give myself a, a wild card now because we talked about uh, Adrian Peterson. So uh, some names up here is, I just can't believe the, the experts are suggesting. I mean, maybe they didn't have anything else. I mean, when, when you get this list, I've, I've done the waiver rankings before. And when you get this list, you get a list of players that are within the parameters of, uh, ownership and so forth. But you still don't have to pick them. <laughs> but they've, <laughs> got, they've got some guys here that I'm really, uh, I'm not really all that excited about. I'm like, for instance, Rashad Penny here. 
for example, at RB6. I I really haven't seen anything great from Rashad Penny since he's come back. I think the guys that are doing stuff are like DJ Dallas and Alex Collins, really. And whenever Penny gets in there, he's thinking, well, he's in there. He's not hurt. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> that's a gift in itself sometimes with him. Yeah, and, and so, you know I mean? yeah, it, it just seems like he's he's just along for the ride on the Seahawks backfield, and that's just about it. I mean, I mean, I even see Travis Homer doing more than Rashad Penny. Rashad Penny is not a guy I think should be on this list. I would never, never, ever, ever, ever. This is a, can I, well, you should never say never, but I, I'm not going to pick up Rashad Penny now or in the foreseeable future. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. Huh? So tell, us how you, tell us how you really feel about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I don't know how you feel, but... Uh, I'm gonna... no, I agree with you. I mean, he's, yeah, he has not produced since he's... I mean, he hasn't produced in, in years. I mean, he had a couple flashes, and people are still holding on to that for some reason. And he's not produced whatsoever since then. Yeah. And somehow, every time, every year, it seems like, oh, he's coming back, he's coming back. And people get excited. They want to draft him. You know, late rod, late rod jump and sleepers and deep sleepers and he hasn't done anything. Mm. So, I mean, I don't know why. And like, you know, like again, you just said he just put his RB6 in his rankings. I mean, it, when he came back, he has not produced anything at all. And I'm not sure why they continue to, why people continue to hope that one day he does produce. Never see it happen. Nah, hope's gone. Um, right. who are you talking about in the running back department? Uh, I got Boston Scott. I mean, that was a surprise on Sunday. I was targeting Kenneth Gainwell everywhere, and he did nothing except for garbage work. But uh, Boston Scott produced. I mean, he he came in and scored two touchdowns, averaged five yards a carry. I mean, all the all the Eagles uh, running backs produced, but Boston Scott was pretty impressive. And if somebody be still out there after the mass rush from last week. We saw some out there and you gotta grab them. Yeah, I always kind of thought Boston Scott was the proper guy to get. Cause Gainwell's like, uh, he's, he's the Sproles guy. Uh, yeah. Darren Sproles. He's kind of the Darren Sproles, uh, player on that, on that team. So I kind of thought that what's well, actually Boston Scott is probably the really, is the better guy to have. And, uh, so I'm kind of not surprised Gainwell's on the shelf. Gainwell, um, he's very script dependent. Uh, they just didn't need him in a game like against Detroit. Yeah, maybe we'll see him more in, in when they're in negative game strips because, I mean, against Detroit, I mean, everyone's in a positive game strip against them. So, yeah. um, but yeah, maybe we'll see Gainwell more. But he was still, I mean, Boston Scott showed he could produce, so I think he's going to have more opportunities uh, moving yeah. forward. Yeah, there's uh, there's no uh, there's no rush to get Gainwell. I have Gainwell on my bench, and I I actually played him in the week before, and he scored a touchdown. He did great. And I think that's what people got elevated in their senses by is that you know when you it's that recency thing, you know it, and and with uh, so it was a kind of a perfect storm for him. But I actually I was kind of wondering like oh out to get Scott. It's actually I mean rushing out to get Gainwell. It's actually Scott that's going to be the guy. You just know it because he's played in the offense. And actually, Scott's a good, very good running back. He's, yeah, he showed he's, he's a good back. Yep, yeah, he is. Of course, we knew that. Uh, next up, uh, we're going to go to the wide receivers. And Dennis, you can start. All right, I'm going to go to uh, Van Jefferson of the Rams. I think he gets uh, more of our tune now to get the ball, especially with Deshaun Jackson asking to be traded. Uh, Jefferson scored three times this season. for plenty of targets to go around in that Rams offense. Um, he's averaging five targets. Well, that's six weeks. I think that's going to increase. It'll be a good uh, wide receiver three in your deeper format. He's a pretty electric player. I like Van Jefferson. I dropped him for Meikle Hardman. Don't know why. But, uh, <laughs> uh, Meikle Hardman's uh, Meikle Hardman. He has. He's kind of a similar kind of thing, actually, to Van Jefferson. Similar kind of thing. Like if anything happens to uh, you know to one of the other front front running wide receivers, you know, Van Jefferson. Uh, like if that, something happens, especially if something happens to Woods, Van Jefferson is right there. We don't right. want anything happening to Cooper Cup. We we've had enough of big time. You know, Cooper Cup. Uh, he's kind of another subject that can be discussed. I mean, did you know that he's actually um, he's actually doing Megatron things? Yeah, it's crazy. I, mean, I never. I mean, I know he's obviously good. He's had a great career. I mean, him and Stafford had this uh, great chemistry that it's. Um, you figure it's going to slow someone down. And he keeps you know getting ten catches over hundred yards, scores every week, twice maybe even. It's, yeah, I wish I would have drafted in more leagues, but 
Um, you know, just, if you got him in your league, you're, you're going to be at the top. Uh, they're top in every one of these. I mean, he's the first. Market. He is the first wide receiver since Megatron to get uh, um, uh, two double double touchdown games before half the season's over. So, of course, I don't. I, well, I mean, Megatron. Megatron's 2011 season was just like incredible, but. But uh, but Coop, Cooper Cup is not far <laughs> from, from that. He's yeah, it's crazy, he's, phenomenal. He's, and of course, Matthew Stafford's throwing the ball, so kind of kind of adds up in a way. You know, Sean McVay is loving it too. You know, he's like oh, a yeah. mad scientist back there trying to. Oh yeah, get these. You know what I mean? You know, now you got you always thought that golf was a problem, and now you get Stafford. Now he's doing all these plays, and the offense is skyrocketing. And not only that, defense—a big defensive move that today for the Rams as well. Oh yeah, Von Miller. Holy cow! I you think know? they just keep loading up that defense and. They were oh, all what a ready. <laughs> they were all for a couple ready of draft picks, you know. Yeah, uh, they're they're just. I mean, yeah. They're who was it? One of one of our uh, F six P uh, uh, bohos out there. They put a, put up. A, I forget who it is. It's a, well, it might have been. Key. Somebody put up a a, a line of where <laughs> the, the Rams don't have any draft picks <laughs> like until until pick one hundred. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so they yeah, get. If uh, you're gonna win it all, though, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, though. I mean, if what would you think if you had a chance to win it all and that didn't have, oh, yeah. you say a third, fourth round pick is your first pick? I mean, it really matter. It's the object. Won the Super Bowl. It's the object of the game is to win the Super Bowl. That's why they right. do it. Yeah, who cares about draft picks if, if you win? Yeah. You know, I wouldn't care. I want. Yeah. I want the ring. I want the title. Yep, and that makes perfect sense. Um, a guy who got like. a receiver. Yeah, my receiver is uh, Jamal Agnew of the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars. This guy's going a little bit under the wire, and I, I really like this player. Uh, he's he's WR11 in the uh, Fantasy Pros list, and uh, I kind of like where he is on this list. I, I really like this um, this Agnew guy. Um, just to get, just to put up his statistics here, um, he had a touchdown. He had his first touchdown uh, of the year. Um, and uh, just to uh, tell you that uh, this is his uh, this is his fifth season fifth fifth year in the season he's finally getting an opportunity and he got twelve targets six receptions thirty eight yards and uh, I, I like him as a stash and maybe not so much that you know you pick him up play him but uh, I think this guy's going to have a little bit more of a role but uh, you know it took him five years to get there he's a rookie in 2017, so so he's he's five years into the league I mean you kind of think a guy would have shown up by by now but. He obviously hadn't, so. Uh, Jamal Agu, yeah, yeah, I, I kind of like seeing this list, and I've been watching him play, and he had that big return off that missed field goal. It was kind of electrifying, but uh, I'm seeing him as a, quite of a solid player. I, I prefer Chenault, of course. LaVisca Chenault, <laughs> he's my favorite. I like him more because he's, he's kind of a Debo, but uh, unfortunately he's on a bad offense, not as good as San Francisco. Actually, and I would have put Debo Samuel as one of my moving on up guys too. But he's my guess. He's been for them too. So I don't know what you think of, uh, of uh, um, Jamal Agnew. You might think it's just a guy, but I think he's all right. No, he's, I mean, he's produced, especially, you know, they lost uh, DJ Shark. I mean, he's you know, stepped in his shoes and he's been producing – Last three weeks, and I guess he has scored his first touchdown. He's producing, unlike uh, LaVisca, who continues to uh, disappoint every week. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, we keep talking about him, but he's uh, he's someone I wanted. I wanted to succeed this year, and he hasn't done nothing yet. Not yet. <laughs> yeah, the profi award is yet. You know what? I had a good chance. <laughs> I probably should have traded. Uh, I probably should have traded Gainwell to uh, Joe for LaVisca Chanel. He owns it in the FC League. That would have been go. good. <laughs> he won't trade him now for Gainwell. He would have last week. No. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> Um, my tight end is uh, Pratt Fryermuth uh, of the uh, he's he's the tight end one on the Fantasy Pros um, waiver rankings list for Week Nine, and uh, you mentioned him before on on the pod, and I kind of just like passed it off. Yeah, yeah, so I've seen it all before, but this guy, but this guy is clearly the the number one uh, the number one guy on the uh, Steelers now. And uh, just to give you his uh, stats for last week, which was quite nice, um, I'm going to be moving him up in my uh, rest of season definitely this week. He was the number one tight end this week. Uh, Seven targets, four receptions, 44 yards, a touchdown. And he finished at uh, tight end number one. Uh, Oh, pardon me. He's uh, for, that's for standard. In half PPR, he was number two, but still, you know, he's up there. So he got uh, 12 fantasy points, uh, 12 fantasy points for a, a, That'll probably go up today because 
Travis Kelsey will probably take the number one spot, so he'll probably drop to number three, probably. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I like this. I like Pat Frayermouth now. And, and you kind of mentioned him before he was, well, big. <laughs> and uh, you were right. But, I mean, he's been very efficient with his catches. Like, uh, okay, granted, in, in week four, he was just uh, one target, one reception. That happens with tight ends. Uh, uh, two targets, two receptions with Denver. Seven targets, seven catches with Seattle. Then they went into the bye week, and I only got four catches on seven targets. But you know, you can't expect. I you got to kind of look at how Ben's throwing the ball these days. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, <laughs> stuff. Yeah. So right. yeah, I mean, yeah. So I like the the Pat Frymouth, uh, uh pick. I'm glad he's number one this week, as well as after such a good week, uh, people should be picking him up. Yeah, I think he's. Uh, that's a good selection. I mean, I like Tim. Uh, I think he's going to have an impact in that Steelers offense. They always they missed uh, having a. Uh, a tight end that often since Heath Miller left there, mm-hmm. and he's been producing. He had a terrific that catch that he had it for a touchdown was a terrific catch. I don't know if you saw that, but he you know he tipped it up to himself basically and tiptoed in and scored. It was a great catch, but it was a uh, the throw wasn't that good, but the catch was phenomenal. So um, yeah, I think he's uh, he's up and coming. And if he's still available, he leaves, man. Uh, I grab him because he's he's gonna make an impact as we get as we go on throughout the season. Right. Uh, your tight end. Yeah, mine's gonna be uh Dan Arnold. All right. Um, yeah, he started slow in Jacksonville after he arrived from Carolina in a trade. Uh, he was targeted ten times and caught eight passes for sixty-eight yards on Sunday. Uh, I think he's gonna be a fan- fantasy factor for the Jaguars. Uh, in the upcoming weeks in that offense with limited targets, so I look for Donald to be uh, up and coming tight end. Lots of loving on the Jaguars. Yeah, crazy. Uh, huh? Yeah, <laughs> crazy. Um, we gotta drop somebody though. We got a drop, and we're both dropping. <laughs> we're we're both dropping Browns. <laughs> and, uh, uh, your drop, uh, Dennis. He has to be OBJ. All right. I'm uh I'm kind of. I mean, he's not getting involved in the Browns' offense uh, through six games the season he's played, and he's got only 17 catches for 232 yards and no touchdowns. It's just not working in Cleveland for OBJ. He's developed no chemistry with Baker in a low volume passing game uh, with the Browns. And, you know, they rely on Chubb and Hunt. And they try to do some uh, short passing game. And once in a while, they try to throw it to Beckham, but he's just, it's just not happening there. I think, you know, he wants to get out. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he's traded uh, tomorrow. Uh, so Vansky tries to make a big deal about getting him more involved. And it seems like he does that every week, or him or Baker are talking about that. Still waiting for that to happen. I don't think it's going to happen in Cleveland. So I think he, uh, he's worth a drop unless he gets traded to, uh, an offensive, uh, no, more of an offensive team. It's more of a passing team. Otherwise, uh, I think he could be eliminated from a roster. Yeah. And, uh, I'm going to drop another round. I'm going to drop Jarvis Landry. And I know he probably might not agree. He might not, there might not be enough time for, you might think it's a bit early because he's come off injury uh, a couple of weeks back. But, yeah, yeah, well, uh, it's, he's come back. He got 10 targets, but he caught five of them. No touchdowns, 65 yards. Finished as a wide receiver in fantasy. See this week, wide receiver 47, wide receiver 42 the previous week. Then he had those four weeks off. So, he's, you know, his best week was week one against the Chiefs. Where he scored his only touchdown, really, uh, and now and now you got at Cincinnati, at New England coming up. Detroit might be better than then you got Baltimore twice. So I really, I'm, I'm not really, I'm really not high on. I was, I was coming into the season. I kind of thought, well, you know, Jarvis Landry would be all right, but got injured and he came out of injury and things on really turned up. I don't know what's going on with the uh, receivers of the. Well, maybe it has something to do with Baker. Because Baker's been just really based on quarterback numbers, Baker's been terrible, and that's probably the reason. And it might, and of course, you alluded to that when when you were talking about Odell Beckham. There's just the I don't know for some reason he's just not connecting with these guys as he should be. I don't know how you you're you know you being kind of a little bit closer to the Browns. What what's your what do you think of Jarvis Landry? Is he a hold for you or is, or can he be dropped? Yeah, I think he's still a hold if you're in full put PR leagues. I think he. He's a lot of targets. He's Baker's go-to guy when he's in trouble. Uh, Baker seems like he's always in trouble, but I think the injuries, he may not be suitable to be on the field now with that torn legum and is not the only shoulder. Um, he's trying to gut it out. And I think he's affecting his accuracy uh, too much, but I think I would hold on to Landry, especially in PPR formats. He, he gets, I mean, he's averaging you know, almost 80 receptions a year in the last three years in Cleveland, so uh, I wouldn't give up on Landry's too quick and it'd be easier wide receiver three. 
or a flex in, in the PPR league, then I can't see dropping him right now. Okay. That's fair. Um, now we move on to our uh, uh, spec ads, guys who are kind of outside. And I, I alluded to this guy before, so I'm not going to talk too too much about him too deeply because Divine is Igbo, uh, because of the injury to, uh, to Robinson, whom we, we don't really know the full extent of that injury, but um, Zigbo might be a guy you can stash. Obviously, anybody who's been dropped to the waiver wire obviously isn't val- too valuable to a team, but um, the Saints dropped them because they needed room basically for uh, Mark Ingram. So uh, the Jacksonville have picked them up. Um, he might get some work. Uh, so if you didn't get in on if you didn't get in on any of the goodies on on Wednesday morning, um, you might be able to uh, you know when you're picking over the bones, you might be able to uh, <laughs> grab Divine as well. And speaking of pick, picking up picking over the bones, is that that's one big complaint people have about waiver wire is that is that the waivers get done like at four in the morning, for people. right? <laughs> and then and yeah. then the people like who are on the west coast or something like that, they're up late and they you know they they get to pick they get you know they're picking over the bones while you're sleeping it seems a little unfair i got a feeling they might start changing that so to have it a little more balanced for the time of when uh waivers are you know processed so i, I don't know how you feel about that um, yeah that makes sense i mean i think there's a lot of guys out there too that you know they stay up um even as way on the east coast they stay up to after the waivers so they can pick up players they get dropped right away so you know it's all you know a little gamesmanship but they try to any advantage they can get they'll try to take you know so if i can yeah. see the maneuvering the timing of the waiver way it sense to do that to make it fair for everybody yeah so here's my spec ad, and uh, for you to wrap up the show, who's your spec ad there, Dennis? Yeah, somebody you uh, kind of alluded to earlier, uh, Taji Sharp of the Falcons. I mean, he caught five or six targets for a team leading 58 yards um, with Ridley out. And I mentioned, you know, I, I picked up Russell Gage thinking he'd be the guy. I picked up the wrong guy. Should have been Sharp. I mean, he, he's, uh, he's, you know, he, he's uh, there with a uh, very thin wide out crew in Atlanta and either Cal Pitts and Coral Passing can catch all the passes so I think Sharp will be there um, to pick up the scraps and someone to pick up in deep leagues and in 12 you know, 14 league 14 team would be someone you could stash on your team see if he pops yeah he's one of my new entries onto the rest of season ranking and uh, I quite like that pick, uh, especially owing to the situation set about Calvert Ridley. Hope for the best for this guy. It's, it's really a weird situation. Um, yeah. yeah, so that's it uh, for the Fantasy Edge for week nine. Uh, don't forget to uh, check out Dennis's uh, stock up and stock down. You'll, you'll see more players that uh, have more uh, stock up and down implications with uh, more zeroed in than the rest of season. Uh, rankings, which I do, uh, come out on on Thursday, and uh, also check out on Friday. Friday night is the blurb view, which uh, every game announcers, sleepers, everything. I put a, I got a whole bunch of stuff in there uh, every Friday night, so be sure to check out the uh, uh, the blurb view uh, on Friday night. And uh, Dennis, we'll see you next week. Hopefully, we don't have such horrible news. You know, if it's a better week, the fancy one. Yeah. Take care, everybody. (laughs) Thanks for joining us on the Fantasy Edge. Adios. Bye-bye.